Hi, Andrea. How are you feeling now that exams are over? It's fantastic to have finished, isn't it? And to sleep in every morning. What about you? Well, I've been catching up on sleep too, but I've got a lot to do before I leave for England. Perhaps you could give me some advice. I've got a lot of things I can't possibly take back with me, but I don't know what to do with them. Well, it depends on what sort of things they are and whether you're thinking of giving them away or selling them. Well, almost everything furniture, the fridge, and other kitchen stuff that I bought from the previous tenant. But the new people have already got what they need, so they're not interested in buying stuff from me. I can't afford to give it away, but I'm not sure how to sell it all. Oh, and there are some clothes and books as well. Why can't you take them? The books are really heavy. It's so expensive if you exceed the airline baggage allowance, and the clothes just won't all fit in my suitcase. It's amazing how much stuff I've accumulated since I've been here. Anyway, I don't think I'll need as many summer clothes in England as I have here in Australia. I see. Well, there are several alternatives. First of all, you could put up notices around the university about the books. You know, on the notice boards in the Student Union Building and in the Economics Department. Anywhere second and third year students will see them. People are always keen to buy cheap textbooks. OK, what, what should I say on the notices? Just put the titles, authors, and price you want, your name, of course, and maybe put your phone number on those little tear off tags. That's a good idea. And what about the furniture? You could try doing the same thing, but usually students are away all summer, so they don't want to buy furniture now. Another place to try might be a second hand shop. Someone from the shop will usually come around and give you a free quote, and then you can decide. But you don't usually get much money for that sort of stuff. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Another alternative is to put an advertisement in the trading post. Do you know that paper? It comes out every week advertising things people want to sell. You have to pay to put the advert in and then hope people phone. Give them as much information as possible and if they're interested, invite them to come and have a look. The hard part is agreeing on a price. No, I haven't seen the trading post, but I should have a look at it. And I could advertise the fridge, the microwave and the furniture. But the kitchen stuff isn't really that good. You know, old cutlery, a few pots and pans and some plates and things. What shall I do with them? Well, another option is to donate the kitchen things to a charity shop. You know, like the Salvation Army or St Vincent de Paul? Why don't you get a second-hand shop to give you a quote first? Yes, I could do that. Find out how much they'll give me and then decide whether to sell them or give them away. But I've still got the clothes. A charity shop will take them too, as long as they're in good condition. And even though you don't get any money, at least you know that someone who really deserves some help has benefited. That's a good point. I'll advertise the expensive stuff, the furniture, and donate the clothes and kitchen stuff. Let's go and buy a trading post and you can help me write the advert. Well, actually, I'm interested in buying the fridge and the microwave Depending on the price, of course. OK, let's see how good you are at bargaining. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now it turns to part two. Part two. You have just arrived at the student hostel where you will live during the term. The manager is explaining the rules, and another student is asking questions. Listen to the conversation and complete the form. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to sixteen. Now listen carefully and answer questions eleven to sixteen. Excuse me, I want to ask you about the charges for meals. Are they the same as they were last year? No, I'm afraid they're not. We've managed to keep most of them the same, but we've had to increase the charge for breakfast. How much is it now? It's two dollars fifty. It used to be two dollars. I see. What about lunch? It's unchanged. Still three dollars. Does dinner still cost three dollars? Yes, it does. We've managed to keep the prices down this year, but the best deal is the three meal plan for forty eight dollars per week. We give you vouchers to present when you come into the cafeteria, and you get twenty one meals for your forty eight dollars. That works out to a little more than two dollars a meal. The two meal plan is also at last year's rates of thirty six dollars per week. We give you vouchers for that too. My sister was in this hostel before me. I'm sure the hours for breakfast used to be longer. Yes, they were. They used to be seven to nine thirty, but to keep our expenses down, we made them seven to nine. Lunch is the way it was, though. Hold on. Dinner six to seven thirty. Isn't that a change? Yes, it is. And in fact, the form is wrong. It used to be five thirty to seven thirty, but now it's six to eight p.m. Six to eight p.m. That's good. So, which plan would you like? I'd like to think about it, please. I need to check my lecture schedule. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions seventeen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions seventeen to twenty. Can you tell me how to get to my room, please? Of course, you're in the new wing, which is very freshly painted and pleasant. But I'm afraid you're going to have to go to a couple of other offices before you can have the key. You're in the admissions office now. Leave this office and turn right and go to the end of the hall. The last office is the fees office, where you can pay the balance of your room deposit. They'll give you a receipt. Okay. After you've been to the fees office, come back past admissions. You'll see a very large room at the northwestern corner of the building. You can't miss it. That's the student lounge, and if you go in there, you can meet some of the other students and see who'll have a room near you. That's good. Can I get a cup of coffee there? Yes, there's a vending machine in the corner. Then go to the key room, which is opposite the lift and next to the library. Show them your receipt, and you can pick up your key there. My luggage was sent on ahead. Do you know where I should collect it? The box room is next to the women's toilet. You'll have to get the key from the key room. Thank you. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation between two people who are about to share a project at work. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-five. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-five. Hi, Bill. How are you? I'm okay now, Sarah, but I was so ill last week. Oh dear! What was the problem? Did you eat that dodgy fish in the canteen? No. At first, I thought it was a cold, but then my head started hurting and my eyes started to go blurry. Oh, I'm so sorry. That sounds serious. Yeah, it's okay actually. I went to the doctor, and he diagnosed me with a migraine. He gave me some medicine, and I'm starting to feel much better. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Well, I'm also glad you're in today because we have to work on a new project together. Oh, are we in the same section? No, it's just us. No one else. Mr. Donaldson put us down as B team because we live near each other. That could be fun. What do we have to do? Well, the project is partly internet research, then checking reference books for information to prepare a survey, which we have to use with people we know. Great. What's the topic? It's to do with shopping over the last ten years. We have to find out how customers have changed their behaviour. Okay. So, what's the first step? I think the first thing to do is to check the list of references he gave me, but my computer is in for repair. So, if I check in the reference library, would you be willing to look up some references online? Once we're done with the reference checks, we can write the questions together. That's fine. I'll do the internet research. So, what sort of shopping are we looking at? Only food or goods or clothes shopping. We have to find people who are willing to tell us about personal things, like deodorants, cosmetics, soap, or vitamin creams. The other groups are doing food, electrical goods, and clothes. That won't be so easy, Sarah. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions twenty-six to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-six to thirty. People might think those things are a bit private. Yes, I thought about that. I'll ask the women, and you can ask the men. That should work, okay? Well, if you think so. Give me the list of references then. Sorry, I left them in my other bag at Joseph's house. I'll get them for you tomorrow. Okay. Well then, this afternoon, I think I'll catch up on the notes from last week. Can you help me, or are you busy? I've made you a copy of my notes already to save you time. Here you are. Wow! Thanks, Sarah. That's so thoughtful. Well, since there's nothing for us to do right now, shall we go for lunch? Well, actually, I'll have to catch you later. I have to go to a meeting this afternoon. Can I phone you tonight to arrange when to meet? No, sorry, I have a date. Can we meet in the laboratory for the first class tomorrow? I'm not sure because I have to go to the library to collect some books. What about meeting there at lunchtime? Do you mean in the lab? Yes. Okay. See you in the laboratory tomorrow at noon. Then. Sounds like we have a lot of work to do.
That is the end of part 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part 4. Part 4. You will hear a lecture about geotourism. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Now, I'd like to move on to talk about something called geotourism. Geotourism is, very basically, leveraging the benefits of tourism for local communities. I would just like to give you a couple of statistics which are very illustrative of the current situation with regard to young travellers and international tourism. Firstly, Tourism has an impact on more people worldwide than any other industry. Indeed, it has an impact on one in every two people, either directly or indirectly. The second statistic is that in global tourism, there is a 97% economic leakage. This means that if you spend £100 on going on holiday, normally only £3 of that money will actually reach the people who are giving you the services and the accommodation, for example, in the destination. If you put these two figures together, you can understand why some of the regions of the world which have very high levels of tourism still have very high levels of poverty and huge developmental challenges. These countries have this massive industry demanding a huge number of services, but they are not seeing a fair reward for these services. Geotourism is about changing this. Projects are now being developed with financial organisations such as the World Bank. One of these involves developing a technology platform which is bringing grassroots travel products such as hotels, locally owned hotels, not global chains, very locally owned tour operators to the international travel market, therefore avoiding the middlemen. These middlemen often cut them out of the market completely or just make their business unsustainable. Another way that geotourism can be promoted is through the niche travel market of volunteering. These days, a significant number of older teenagers want to spend a gap year, either between school and university, or university and employment. Often, these people want to spend some or all of their year volunteering, but they either don't have the money or don't feel inclined to pay the main volunteering organisation businesses the fee they require, which can be as high as £3,500. What they are looking for is an organisation who can connect them with people on the ground, who can suggest worthwhile local projects. So, this is a real win-win scenario. The organisers charge a small flat fee, which then goes to the local contact. Thus, the local contact gets a very good commission just for one customer. The customer is also saving a large amount of money and time, both of which they can give to the projects they end up working on. There is still quite a long way to go before poverty in the most popular of tourist areas is eradicated, but a focus on this type of geotourism could provide an answer. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.